We want to determine if there exist real numbers x and y satisfying this system of linear inequalities. Since there are only two variables, and the numbers are rather nice, we can solve this graphically. But is there a way to deal with this algebraically? Notice that if we have a system of inequalities that involve one variable, say something that looks like this, then it's easy to determine if there is an x satisfying all these inequalities. We just need to make sure that the smallest of these upper bounds is at least the largest of these lower bounds. In other words, we need to have qi at least pj for all i from 1 up to m and for all j from 1 up to n. So we can try to do something similar to this system and pretend that we just have the variable x. So notice that we can rewrite this system to the following equivalent system. All right. So for these last two inequalities, I multiply both sides by minus 1, and then changing the sense of the inequalities, and bring everything else to the right-hand side. So now I have these as lower bounds on x, and these are upper bounds on x. And as we have seen before, we need each of these upper bounds to be at least each of these lower bounds. So this has a solution, if and only if the following system has a solution. So I need the upper bound to be at least this lower bound, and this to be at least this, and this to be at least this, and this to be at least this. And we can simplify things a bit. So this system is equivalent to 2y at least 1, 3 halves y at least 2, 3y at least minus 1, and 3 halves y at least 0. And we can normalize the coefficients of y. That will give us y at least a half, y at least 4 thirds, y at least minus 1 over 3, and y at least 0. So notice that this system does not contain the variable x. And this system has a solution if and only if the original system here has a solution. But clearly, there's a solution here. We can just set y to something bigger than all these numbers on the right-hand side. And in particular, we can set y equal to 2. That's the solution to this system. So if we plug the value 2 into y back into this system, we should be able to solve for a value for x. And that's what we'll do. So when y is 2, this is x squared equal to minus 2. And this is x squared equal to 0. This is x less than equal to 1. And this is x less than equal to 5. And so x can be any value between 0 and 1. So in particular, we can set x equal to 0. So x, y equals 0 to is a solution. In the next video, we're going to look at a more formal description of the process that we applied here. And that process is known as Fourier-Moskin elimination.